ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another video talking about Pokemon Go. Now, if you guys haven't seen my last video on the subject, oh boy, shit hit the fan big time. So to make a long story short as possible, basically in the last video, I discussed how Niantic actually went ahead and made one of the absolute worst changes in the long sad history of bad changes in Pokemon Go by nerfing remote raid passes by not only nearly doubling them in price for Pokecoins, but limiting your usage of remote raid passes to five a day. That is not good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why this video here exists is because we have ourselves a very clear-cut example that we're going to be getting into of the developers being so damn out of touch with the player base and tone deaf, it is actually really freaking cringy. So, Lutu here tweets out a thread with some really interesting things that we got to see and talk about. Niantic feeling the need to punish Pokemon Go players in rural areas because the pandemic is is over is narrow-minded. This accompanying interview is fucking ghoulish, and attached to the tweet is an image showcasing part of an interview from a Pokemon Go developer. The world has largely moved back outdoors, and remote raid passes have come to dominate the overall experience of playing in a way we never intended. That's because COVID-19 happened, another thing that wasn't intended. And it just so happens that remote raid passes, along with a lot of the other changes to combat the pandemic, were actually really good quality of life changes that were extremely well received by the player base. But here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, with how Niantic functions, anything that is good, they decide to take away, and anything that is bad, they decide that it's okay to green light. It's become essentially a shortcut to playing the game. I'm going to have something to say about that shortly. We've seen an imbalance because the current price of remote raid passes is matched to the premium battle pass, which is distorting the game's economy and making the game unsustainable in the long term. Oh my god, holy shit. Lutu, I can definitely, definitely agree with you when you say that this interview is fucking ghoulish. And we're not even, like, getting started with this. Like, are you absolutely kidding me? So you want to call remote raiding a shortcut. Well, let me say this. This right here, this entire interview, at least as far as what is showcased in the screenshot goes shows that you are speaking from just one single perspective, the perspective and expectancy that all of your Pokemon Go players have to live in these big-ass cities with active-as-hell communities. Let me let you in on something. That right there is your flawed perception, and reality bitch slaps that right the fuck out of the water. And let me tell you this, okay? It's things like this that further incentivize players to actually spoof. You know what I'm saying? Like, good job for actually encouraging people to spoof and play the game where it's actually so much easier on them, mind, body, and soul. Now, of course, spoofing is against the terms of service. I'm not going to be advocating for breaking terms of service, but you know what? Then again, at the same time, considering you don't give a flying hell about your player base, I'm going to go ahead and turn a blind eye to it, because clearly you don't give a fuck about your players. So why should we care about the rules? Like, you have so many players in so many different situations living in rural areas where there's next to nothing. No community, no stops, no gyms, nothing. And let's also not forget something very, very important here aside from that, which is also very important to take into thought. How about the players that have disabilities, whether they are physical disabilities or mental disabilities, that may not be able to reap the same benefits and experience from playing Pokemon Go as an average Pokemon Go player? And let me let you guys in on a little something else. Now, yes, this is anecdotal, so take it for what you will, all that good stuff, but... I am still a part of various Pokemon Go Facebook group chats, and one of the group chats I'm a part of features my local Pokemon Go community. 
Do you want to know something? Do you want to know what the sad reality is? Is that that chat is barely active because the community here is barely active because of how much Niantic has ruined and killed the game for a lot of my active community. There are spoofing chats that I am a part of that have more activity than my local community Facebook group chat does. What does that tell you? Like, we're barely getting started here, and already this interview is fucking AIDS, but let's keep going. The game will be unsustainable in the long term if you guys keep going with this type of tone-deaf direction. Jeez, I spent almost six minutes in the first part of the thread here. I guess, really and truly, I had a lot to say, and that right there should loan even more credence as to what we are dealing with here. So, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves, I'm sure people taking shortcuts and people living with no Pokestops in an hour radius are the same people. The real world to Niantic are people that live in megacities, otherwise the game can get borderline unplayable. And you know what? I actually made those points earlier in the video, and this right here just further reinforces that, you know what I'm saying? Now, attached to that tweet is an image that reads, The world has, I think, evolved and changed year after year, from 2021 to 2022 to 2023, and we're seeing those changes in our players and their excitement to engage again in going out into the real world. The timing is in part because, yes, we've debuted these new features, like Elite Ray. Okay, <laughs> time out a second. Elite Raids are complete and utter fucking trash. If you guys haven't seen my coverage on that, i.e. the Reggie Drago Elite Raids, go and check that out because, oh my god, that is was a complete and utter hot mess. Elite Raids 100% should not have been a thing, because number one, first and foremost, these are in-person raids. So imagine if you wanted to take part in an Elite Raid, but you don't have an active local community in person to help you out. So you can't remote raid there. The only way that you would be able to do that comfortably would be to essentially spoof, okay? And also, the second big thing as to why Elite Raid shouldn't be a thing is because Niantic demonstrated how completely and utterly inept they are when it comes to their preparedness for said Elite Raids. Again, referencing Reggie Drago Elite Raids, like those were complete garbage. They were complete AIDS. But let's keep going here. We've been able to see the impact they've had. Yeah, they definitely had an impact for all of the negative reasons. Let's hope you at least saw that, unless you had some blinders on or something like that or refuse to see the reality of the messes that you're causing and stuff like that. And that folks are excited, even if they remote raid, to also go out there back into the real world. That's given us the knowledge and confidence this is the right thing to do for the overall long-term health of the game. Oh my god, there is so much I could say in response to that, but I think I've either already said it earlier, like there's so many things that I've said at this point, I can't even keep track of it all. The overall health of the game is poor because you continue to not only be blind to the truth and the reality, that your player base is unhappy with the majority of the decisions that you guys have been making, even though they have been very explicit and very clear in communicating to you their displeasure in said changes, you want to say that you're doing the right thing as well? That is complete bullshit, and it's been proven time and time and time again by the community aplenty. Why does Wu act as if capping remote passes show that they're not doing this purely for money? Well... Here's the funny thing, okay? If they want to make the argument of not doing this for the money, then why in the ever-loving hell did they nearly double the price in Pokecoins for remote raid passes? You know what I'm saying? That sounds like a lot that they were doing that solely for the money, given the fact that remote raiding was extremely popular in comparison to regular raiding, giving the convenience factor and all that stuff, but they decided to not only slap a big-ass limitation on it to five a day for remote raiding, but nearly doubling the price in Pokecoins. This game has a billion other ways to monetize. They have entire systems built around trying to get you to pay unless you, again, live in an extremely populated area. Yup. 
<laughs> you know, the, again, that is one of the very big things that Niantic seem to constantly forget and ignore. The goal here is not short-term revenue, Wu said. Of course, imposing a cap goes to show this is not about extracting more money, even though we are raising prices. Do you not hear the words coming out of your mouth? That freaking statement right there completely contradicts and implodes on itself. First off, I smell tons of cap out of that. You want to say that this isn't about extracting more money, but here's the thing, is that you nearly doubled the prices of remote raids, something that was actually quite a popular and beloved feature by those that want to play the game because they love raiding. That is 100% cap. This is well balanced where we really believe this is not going to create a short-term revenue impact for us. At the end of the day, we are a business that wants to provide this experience for our trainers for many years to come. There's a long-run sustainability impact to the changes, and that's the reason behind them. That is entire bullshit right there. You want to talk about providing experiences for your trainers for many years to come? The only experiences that you're providing to your trainers are the experiences of negativity, the experiences of being ignored, and, you know, where, where is it going to stop? Where is it going to end? Where When are we going to get a change here? I also want to highlight this as well because it brings up yet another big issue when it comes to Pokecoins in Pokemon Go. That being how you can only earn... 50 coins a day from having your Pokemon in gyms. And see, that's not even guaranteed either. You know what I'm saying? So just to put it into perspective, ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted to get a remote raid pass, which costs 195 Pokecoins, you would have to spend a total of four days when it comes to earning 50 coins maximum from gyms. That is is just absolutely absurd. Like, if you're going to be increasing the price on things like remote raid passes, at least increase our ability to earn more daily Pokecoins. And it just doesn't have to be from gyms, okay? It could be from other things as well. Niantic, use your imagination, because I know that you have an imagination when it comes to how you can sabotage your fucking game for your players. Now, there's a couple of other things I want to quickly highlight slash talk about here. One of them coming from Dan Ottawa. He says... The more I reflect on this, the more I think Niantic Labs just incentivized cheating. Spoofing and people having three to four accounts will likely increase substantially. So if Niantic ever wants to bitch and moan about the increase of people breaking their terms of service, that is 100% on them. So good job there, Niantic. Good job incentivizing cheating. And here is another thing I want to showcase. And this is a very, very painful reminder of what Pokemon Go used to have. And that was back when Pokemon Go was actually worth playing and investing in. Number one, legendaries from research breakthroughs. Y'all just don't get that anymore. 216 steps and grass rustles. We don't get that anymore either. Discounted remote raid passes. Three for 250 coins. Y'all ain't gonna get that anymore either. Pandemic increase one spawn per minute. That doesn't exist. Actual deals on boxes in the shop. Yeah, I remember those times as well. Old gym systems earn up to 100 coins. Yeah, why can't we have that here at the very least to help offset this ridiculous price increase of remote raid passes and who knows what else, you know what I'm saying? EX raids, yeah, we haven't seen those in years. When are they going to make a return? I would much rather have EX raids than bullshit-ass, bitch-ass, stupid-ass, broken-ass elite raids, okay? And large generation drops each generation. I remember when there would be so much hype when it comes to generations being dropped every year. But you know what? It just seems like that Niantic really knows how to kill the hype from Pokemon Go for their player base. And here's something else I want to showcase because it's completely and utterly true. Aside from Pokemon Go, which is very much on its way to death at this point, Niantic has killed 
every single other game under their leadership. The fact that Pokemon Go is still hanging on is beyond astounding. And the reason for that, one of the biggest reasons why it's still hanging on is because it's fucking Pokemon. It's a nostalgia bait for a lot of people. Now, this here is also something very, very important that I want to bring to your guys' attention because... If you really, really want to make an impact when it comes to Niantic actually getting it, I would normally say hit them where it hurts, that being their wallet, but we actually have ourselves a bio here bringing up something that I had never thought of until I came across their tweet. Y'all, Niantic could care less about money. Limiting remote passes is a major revenue loss. You have to hit them where it hurts. Location and AR data collection. Delete the app from your phone, disable Adventure Sync, and or don't have it open all day. Their main goal is this, data collection. It is what the company was built for. Even if this does not directly affect you, please consider that not all of us live safely in cities with ample local players. Now, this right here is also another big thing that Niantic is after you for, is to harvest your data. So I guess that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is another way to get Niantic where it potentially hurts, that being not giving them data. So by doing so, you would unfortunately have to quit playing the game and delete the app from your mobile device. If there is any other updates pertaining to this subject that is worthwhile talking about slash roasting, you can bet your bottom dollar that your boy is going to be on the uptake in this. Make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on, like the video if you enjoyed, and also be sure to follow me on Twitter for more behind the scenes tweets and thoughts that you don't see here on YouTube. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for your time as well in viewing this video. Have yourself a damn good one, you beautiful people. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and I'll see you next time.